Hello Internet, I'm Udoka. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about my own mental health and also my two cents on whatever I want. This month has been Trisha Paytas month. It's been Trisha Paytas month. Um, I wanted to react to Trisha Paytas um, doing some really insensitive videos about Anna Nicole Smith and John Bonet because somebody uploaded those clips together. And also because I've come to realize people don't remember who these people are. Okay, like I was watching, I'm subscribed to, um, and y'all subscribe to her. Where is her video? I'm, subscri I'm subscribed to Pearl Swirl. And she reacted to this video. But in her video, here she is. Y'all go subscribe her. Um, she reacted to this video and she just reminded me, yeah, a lot of people don't actually know who is Anna Nicole Smith and John Benet Ramsey and why are people so upset about it? And this also made me realize, oh, this must be part of why this is kind of part of why people, um, why every time Trisha Paytas is canceled, it like, it's more and more people who join in the cancellation because people don't even know. They're like, well, I don't even know why, what I'm upset about. Like people don't even know. So I wanted to help break it down a little bit further. So the video that put these clips together, how do I close these lines? Okay. The video that put these clips together, Miss Brooke Irene put these clips together. And Anna Nicole Smith is somebody who, yeah, she's somebody who was like, she was a model. She was like a plus size model. She was a X symbol, S E X symbol. She was, I don't know. She was kind of like the Kim Kardashian of the nineties. And she was also like blonde bimbo, that aesthetic. Um, was she in Baywatch? So I'm just telling you off my memory. I was a young child when all this stuff happened. But then like towards the end, it was really concerning. Um, cause there were interviews like this one. Listen to this. My best friend. Um, my best friend is my lawyer. Do you think that's sort of odd that your best friend is your lawyer? Well, that's where the loneliness comes back in. <laughs> all right, tell me, explain. <laughs> You see how people are concerned? Like, it's, it feels like, you know how people are concerned about Britney Spears now? You know, and then when you look at Britney Spears, um, when you look at her interviews, she'll sound like this. Like, sometimes, you know what, mask off, and that's, it's really lonely. And you're really concerned. It's like, how is your best friend, your lawyer, Howard K. Stern, not to be confused with the shock jock, Howard Stern, um, got into a relationship with her and people felt like he was manipulating her. People felt like he was providing her recreational las drogas. Um, people just felt like he was just really taking advantage of her. But on the other hand, this is the nineties y'all in early two thousands, the public like shock, shock, shock journalism and victim blaming was rampant. It was rampant. So as much as you'll see pieces like this, where the reporters like, we are concerned for you. You would also see, you know, comedy shows and stuff making fun of her. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at what Trisha, 
was doing here. Now this person says that they're going to show a clip of Anna Nicole and then just to pose it with a clip of Trisha. Anna, look at me. Riley thinks you've absolutely lost your mind. Huh? Riley thinks you've lost your mind. I didn't lose my mind. She thinks you have. I didn't. Is this a mushroom trip? Huh? Is this a mushroom trip? Huh? Is this a mushroom trip? What do you mean? I'm kidding. What does that mean? I'm kidding. I said, this footage is worth money. So Howard K. Stern was sued. I don't remember what happened with the lawsuit. You know, they sued saying, you know, you're, you're, um, a busing her, uh, for clout for money. And his lawyer said, no, she's just hamming it up for the camera. And this debate, this was, a, this was a debate back then. I don't want to, I don't want to keep like, I don't want to keep looking at that, but let's look at Trisha and what she does. Trisha. We're going to go for a little ride outside in here. Trisha. Trisha, look at me. YouTube thinks you've lost your mind. Huh? YouTube thinks you've lost your mind. So as much as, you know, people are getting on to Trisha for why did you even do this? Her mom is participating like, yo, I got I got beef with I have big beef with Trisha Paytas mother. It's like, what in the world, lady? I have big beef with Trisha Paytas mother. She don't make no kind of sense. Oh, boy. Mm, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother video that's a whole nother video pro swirl did some reactions to trisha pace's mom but trisha pace's mom is recording this now i remember i wasn't i i didn't see this clip when it first came out but i remember when i was starting to really get into trisha pace's i saw this clip and I was like, oh my God, girl, you are shameless. Even when, Tr when Trisha Paytas first uploaded this video, um, that was during the time of YouTube where you tried to be as shocking as possible. You were as irreverent, as offensive, you know, you were as much as possible. But I remember when I did discover it, um, some years ago I was looking at the comments and like even then people didn't know people didn't remember who and Nicole Smith was like her fans her fans were young they didn't they didn't really like Trisha what are you doing why do you look like a clown what is this huh? like people are confused I'm like damn people really don't remember stuff in pop culture and pop culture history but, um, yeah, she's, she's making fun of Anna Nicole Smith. Now, what inspired her to do this? First of all, first of all, you gotta see that Trisha Paytas was obsessed with Anna Nicole Smith. Trisha Paytas wanted to be Anna Nicole Smith. She wanted to be, look, when you Google Trisha Paytas, Anna Nicole Smith, eating like Anna, turning myself into Anna, Anna, Anna. Um, Anna Nicole Smith makeup and hair tutorial eight years ago. So Trisha Paytas, I think she identified with Anna Nicole Smith and she wanted to be like her. She wanted to be rich and successful and like have the whole world worry about her and care about her. She wanted to be like Anna Nicole Smith and Trisha Paytas is not the first and only woman to take inspiration from Anna Nicole. Nicki Minaj, inspired by Anna Nicole Smith. Okay? Rest in peace to Anna Nicole Smith. Yes, my dear, you're so explosive. Say hi to Mary, Mary Joseph. Now, up the double, my dosage. 
So, like, a lot of women see Anna Nicole kind of like a martyr and just really relate to her and just appreciated what she was able to give um, to pop culture before, you know, before the depressing stuff. Um, So it was only a matter of time. It was only a matter of time that Trisha do something like this. Uh, why would she do this? This is so insensitive. This is so like you're mocking like uh, actually a really horrible situation. I feel like two things. Number one, like remember I told you back in the ni- in the in the nineties and early two thousands, the media loved the media was so problematic. And they loved it. And the audience loved it. And it, it Eminem is a great example of this, okay? Because Eminem kind of represents the sentiment very well. When Eminem came out, he was very reverent. I loved it, right? I'm a kid. I love it. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't believe he's saying this. Oh my gosh. Um, And there were parts of Eminem that it was like, it was irreverent, but it... <laughs> It to me, it's not problematic. Like talking about we're gonna do it like the Discovery Channel, and adding that into his right, like adding, just adding stuff into the raps. Like I'm gonna sit on Tom Green's face with my butt. Like just, <laughs> I don't know. Like stupid stuff that that would make a kid laugh, right? Like oh my gosh, <laughs> his butt is on that guy's face. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but he also did things that um, you would not get away with today. Um, and so uh, LGBT community, which I don't think LGBT existed. I think it was just LG. <laughs> I think it was just LG community. Maybe B. I think it was, just, I think it was like just LG B. Didn't it used to be called BGL or something like that? Anyway, that community was like petitioning to cancel Eminem. Feminists were trying to cancel Eminem because he was rapping about, I hate my mom. I'm going to, uh, I hate my girlfriend. I'm going to, uh, and she's pregnant. My TV is gone cold. I'm wondering why. Stan's like, I put my pregnant girlfriend in the back of the trunk of my car. <laughs> like just crazy, right? And Eminem's response to that would be to make a music video where he dresses up like you and like farts in your general direction. And that's the attitude. That's been the attitude of the media, like just being really problematic. And the fact that it riles some people up It's like, oh, good, we're going to do more of it. That's the attitude. Now, towards the time of YouTube, YouTube came in 2007. People started coming on like 2008, 2009, such as Shane Dawson, uh, Trisha Paytas, right? Um, 2010. And this is around the time where the mainstream media was beginning to be more sensitive it's still problematic. Even today is still problematic, but like, it just seems like ever since 2010, the mainstream media has been trying to become less and less problematic. So that was to draw the internet because on the internet, all of that irreverent, oh my gosh, I can't believe you said that shock value stuff that lived on the internet now. And it was leaving mainstream media. And even before YouTube, there are websites like Ebombs World that you will go to to watch irreverent skits and stuff like that. So YouTube was just, listen, when YouTube came around, people did not give a damn about what you've been through, what your feelings are, and how it's affecting your mental health and how it's affecting um, our society at large. They just did not care. Like, I do not care that, um, you think 
I'm being anti-black. I don't care. You know, like just stuff like that. Um, this is also around the time that gaming culture was growing a lot because online gaming was growing. So people were just getting used to vocalizing really bad things. And people were used to watching really bad things. And that's what they wanted. And um, even if you got negative attention, the negative attention was still really good. Like the negative, it's kind of like, you know, when Logan Paul, when he, um, when he recorded the dude in the Japanese forest and that got a lot of negative attention, but he got more subscribers. It's kind of like that. It's like negative attention is actually still really, really good attention. That's how it was back in YouTube days then when she uploaded this. So that's why she she did this. She did this because she was super clout chasey. Honestly, you can argue that she's still clout chasey and trolly. But she was super clout chasing, super trolly back then. And like we examined in her stares off into the distance car video, she believed then there were no repercussions or no consequences. And having commenters who are saying, hey, this is really insensitive, take it down. For people like Trisha, that's not a consequence. That is not a repercussion. That is just uh, people upset, which is going to get me more views. The views are the repercussions. More views, more attention. YouTube favoring her in the algorithm. YouTube putting her on the front page. Getting, getting media attention. Her video going viral enough and offending the right demographic of people that she'll be put on mainstream news. Like when she... um. When she was uh, pretending to vote for Mitt Romney and Republicans were just so mad because they felt like, oh my gosh, you're making people think that Republicans are dumb bimbos. And so that got on, that went on Fox News, like Fox News was offended. So she got on Fox News and she got clout. And yeah, back then the negative attention was good because I remember when that Mitt Romney thing happened, that made me like her even more. Cause I was like, yeah, yeah let's troll the, let's troll the normies. Ha ha ha. Right. That was just the attitude back then. But now everybody is online. Um, like literally you have people, you have people like mysterious T people who she's, you know, she's like a soccer mom. Um, you know, live, laugh, love, type of person who is like, what's a Reddit, you know, those type of people are not, are online making tea videos, making tea videos, right? So now the internet is not just for the nerds and pwning the, tr- the normies. The internet is for literally everybody is on here. And that's why now That's why now when you offend a marginalized group, people care or pretend to care. In my, in my opinion, a lot of the care is fake is pretend. Um, that, but that's just my opinion. That's talk for a different day, honey child. I, I, I think it's a lot of people who are fake woke. Um, just, just because it's popular to, to act as if you care. Okay, so that's my explanation of why she did this. Um, now, I'm the kind of person who I, um, I don't know. Like when I first saw this, I, I, I rolled and moved on, right? Um, but then the the real question for someone like me is, why did you leave it up? Like I still I'm still trying to understand why she wants to be applauded for deleting her videos this week, when these videos have been up for 
almost a decade, some more than a decade. Why you want to be applauded that you just now are deleting them? That that's that's what I don't understand. So anyway, this Anna Nicole, um, this got me eye rolling. Um, especially because when this was happening, people were doing this. People were making skits and putting them on television just like this, which is probably another reason why she thought it was okay. Because she had seen those things and she had seen how the public, the the backlash against the people who made those skits in the early 2000s, how the public backlash was actually re- re- a reward. Like the public backlash meant you got more fans. That's why she did this. Okay. So... Let's see this the John Benet Ramsey one. Now the John Benet Ramsey one is completely out of pocket. And when I saw it, so when I saw this one a few years ago, I I was eye rolling. When I saw the John Benet Ramsey one, I was like, "Girl, <laughs> that I was like." Then I was on Papa G- Girl, we don't need, mm, girl. I don't. <laughs> okay, now Domine Ramsey. This one she really did for clout. Because this one is out of line. Then I went on Papa Gut. What's his name? Is it Papa Gut? He does live streams reacting to stuff. Is it Papa Gut? Anyway. He he was like, who's John Benet Ramsey? I'm typing in the chat like, you don't know who John Benet Ramsey is? The hell? You as old as me, bro. <laughs> what the heck? He was like, oh yeah, I was I was a kid when it happened. Yeah, John Benet Ramsey was a kid too when it happened. I was a kid as well, but I knew who she was. I, I find that. John, the John Benet Ramsey one, I'm like, y'all gotta know who she is because her, what happened to her? It's such a, like there's endless, there's endless video ever since it happened. Every single year in mainstream media, there would be a new documentary, a new expose about what happened to John Benet Ramsey? Um, like there is an endless amount of content on John Benet Ramsey. Like we can scroll forever. We type John Benet Ramsey, we will be scrolling forever. Okay. So the gist is, and, and by the way, let me also mention something too since we're on the topic of true, true creme, I don't know if I'm allowed to say crime on YouTube. So I'm, I'm gonna call it creme, crim, creme, cry, mm, crime, cry dot, mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. But since we're on the topic of true, true cry, um, there is a lot in the black girl YouTube space. I feel like the people who watch me, they're not like some of y'all, some of y'all be on black girl YouTube. So you, you gonna, you gonna know exactly what I'm talking about, girl. But a lot of you are not, a lot of you are just here to like, oh my gosh, let me see what Trisha did. Let me get an understanding of what the heck, what that, what the heck is a Trisha Paytas. So let me, let me tell you on the black girl YouTube circuit, the narrative with the, you know, the whole Gabby Petito thing. And honey child, if you don't know about Gabby Petito by now, baby, she's a girl who was a travel vlogger trying to do van dwelling. She had an Instagram. She tried to set up her YouTube. Her boyfriend done. Mm. Listen, this is an ongoing case. It's my speculation that her boyfriend done because they found her body and the autopsy said it was a. Huh? 
Mo C I D, aka somebody did the right. Girl, I think it's the. This gotta be. It's always the. It's always the man's. It's always the man's. So, anyway, it's a sad situation. But um. But here we go. The Gabby Petito effect. Okay, so now here, it's not just some black girl on YouTube anymore, though. Because now the mainstream media is starting to do it. ABC News is talking about it. Missing white woman syndrome. So on black girl YouTube, there's not a lot of talk about Gabby Petito because, well, first of all, it is now an FBI. It is now a federal... Like this, when they find this boy, he is in a, he is in a mess of trouble. Cause you can't do that to somebody on federal land, you in trouble. But so there's not much for us to add to it, but also there's just a sentiment of it's another missing white girl. Like, yes, we know, we know you go crazy for the missing white girls. Meanwhile, on the same land that they found Gabby, there has been like what 200 or probably actually more than that missing native american girls on that same land in like the past just couple of years and no media attention black girls missing no media attention so now um more the more uh social justice type of channels are like okay, we're acknowledging this and let's, you know, let's highlight, let's highlight some people who aren't white for once as well. Um, so a lot of people are taking offense to it. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, like this is already a tragedy. Like, and I get that as well. I, I, I understand that. And I also understand that, but also at the same time, I like the way ABC News is, is handling it because they're they're just bringing attention to a bias as well as bringing attention to other tragedies that need attention and need help. Okay, so I bring that up as another way to explain why this John Benet Ramsey is just so like it's just endless content. There is there is to America, I don't know how it is in other countries, but to Americans, there is something about a beautiful baby faced, blonde, white little girl. There's just, there's just something about it. There's just something about a mystery surrounding her tragedy that America just is just fascinated with literally John Benet Ramsey has been in the, a fascination for this country since it happened. It's a little girl. She was a, um, what you call it? Pageant girl, which that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother problematic thing to discuss. I do. I do not agree with little girls being in beauty pageants the way that they are now requiring them to wear wigs, lipstick, mascara, like toddlers and tiaras is, it, it is, let me, I'm not even going to get into it. Oh my gosh. It actually makes me really mad. It makes me really mad. That stuff, that kind of stuff makes me really mad. Okay. But yeah, but you know, she was in these pageants and there's just this narrative that she was just really trying to be mommy and daddy's favorite kid. She has an older brother. So people are like, oh, the dad did it. The little brother, the, the older brother did it. He wasn't getting enough attention. There's just all this mystery and it's never been solidified and proven without a shadow of a doubt what happened. So this is why every, even up to 20 freaking 21, there's new theories always coming out about what happened to Lil Miss JonBenet Ramsey. Um, but I'm 
with most people, I think it was the dad. Um, and I think probably with the help of somebody else who was able to sneak into the house, that's just, but that's just my opinion, child. But anyway, this is who John Benet Ramsey is. All right. This is a tragedy that America is so fast. America tragedy. America is so fascinated with that that to disrespect it in any way is shocking. Okay. So that's kind of how I'm I'm rolling my eye at Trisha mocking Anna Nicole Smith, but when she's mocking John Benny Ramsey, I'm jaw dropping. This girl was six. I mean, there's just so there's just It's just whatever. I don't know. It's too much. It's too much, right? It's, it's... Smile pretty. Do what you're told. Okay, see, I haven't seen this. Cross. 15 years ago today, I was murdered. Mommy, I don't want to play in the basement. It's loud. The washing machine's going. I don't want to play down there. It's more. It's longer than this. She didn't, this person didn't show all of it. There's a part where she's like, Daddy, what are you doing? No, no, don't. And first of all, the fact the fact that she's trying to role play this. Um like nobody did that. Like this this was a this was a lot even for a different time. You know what you you know what I'm talking about. You know how how everybody loved to say it was a different time. This was a lot even for that different time. This was a lot. Um, but remember back then, it you could be so hated. But as long as you can handle the hate, you will actually bring in more new fans. Kind of like Keemstar, kind of like Keemstar, how Keemstar built his, his, uh, fan base. He, he, he would try to be so hated and he can tolerate the hate and clap back and all of this. And that attracts, that attracts a certain, that attracts people that does attract people. But what is so disgusting about this is that she's wearing this top that is intentionally exposing her cleavage intentionally. And then when she's doing the, no daddy, um, the way she was saying it sounded like kind of like a fetish, kind of like kink. So it's like, not only are you trying to, you're role playing this just randomly, but you look as if you're trying to asexualize it. And it is, I can't explain, actually. I can't explain. I can just tell you that I, f- I feel, I feel like, I feel like a computer that the little wheel is turning and then it loads. And it's like, okay. And then it's like, like, that's how I'm feeling inside. Like, like I'm talking and then I... speechless. That's the word. I'm s- speechless, speechless, speechless. I mean, That was the universe telling me to st- to stop. So, <clears throat> again, why did you wait till now to delete? Why did it take you fifteen years? 
oh, however long, 10 years, however long. Why did it take you this long to delete? What time is it? I'm going to wrap up this video. Um, I just wanted to give like cultural context for, for these clips because there's people really out here being like, who's Anna Nicole? Who's John Benet Ramsey? I don't even know. Now you know. Now you know. I encourage you to, you know, if you want to do more research on what what's all this stuff about, I encourage you. Um, I think it's always good to like any bit of history that you can learn more about, learn it. Even if it's pop culture history like this stuff, um, learn it. Here's an interview with one. Of, here's one of the clips. So there are many videos of Anna Nicole Smith of her being whacked out. And this one has a little girl in it no. painting her face. You can open your eyes. Because she's like, you know, paint my face. Paint my face like the clown. And the little girl, you know, at the time loved makeup. She's like, okay, I'll paint your face. But even back then, the little girl was like, there's something wrong with her brain. I don't know. Anna, maybe you should go take a nap. Like, even then, this little girl was like, what is going on? Um, I mean, there's just so much. And she she's did, she did an interview as an adult now, you know, talking about, you know, her thoughts and what she remembers and stuff. But now you have the cultural context. Now, now I hope you kind of understand more why why are people so outraged, outraged by these clips? Not only are they <clears throat> disgusting in their own right, but you, th this is a time last year, this year that Trisha is trying to become like a role model type of figure. And it's like, you can't, how can you, say that you're a champion of people with mental health issues and and you're a champion of protecting children and there's all of these morally noble things to be but you made videos like this not just that you made videos like this but you left them up you left them up, not just that you left them up, but when people question you about it, you ignore the questions. You get what I'm saying? Um, by the way, those of you who are like subscribed to me because of my take on Mysterious T, the person who put all the clips of Trisha together so that people just can no longer deny this is a problematic person. I'm literally asking of Mysterious T the same thing that we're asking of Trisha Paytas. I don't think it's wrong at all to notice that somebody has some type of moral signaling they're giving out. But if their recent past shows a different moral set, it is completely fine to ask those questions. And it's unfortunate when Asking those questions is being called hate. Trisha Paytas is saying she's getting unwarranted hate. And that's, and that's the part that trips me up. That's the part that makes me feel like, what is wrong with you? That's the part that makes me feel like, Whatever morality you're trying to spew today is fake. Because if you really stood for what you stand for today, you would have no problem denouncing what you did back then in clear detail, in a way that makes sense. So anyway, thanks for watching. Huh. My videos are really long. Um, I would like to not make them so long, but I guess I just talk. If you enjoyed it, um, make sure you like so other people see it. Um, until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out.